as we've discovered over the past few weeks, the Five Nights at Freddy's games are full of... interesting engineering choices. Oh, did I say interesting? I meant wrong. From a clown whose torso can open up to reveal a murder claw to sound illusion discs, which emit high frequency noises that can trick your brain into perceiving the animatronic as something completely different, technology better known in the engineering world as straight up magic, there are enough safety code violations here to make OSHA void their bowels faster than, well, we'll get to that. But of all the walking death machines designed to serve pizza, which one is the most dangerous? Well, I've spent the past week diving deep into real world animatronics and the history of robotics, and I think I may have stumbled across the answer. Richard, hit that intro. Now, I know what you're thinking. The original Foxy? This series has killer clowns, fully sentient gators, and a rabbit that literally has the body of an immortal serial killer inside, and the pirate furry is the most dangerous? Well, don't worry, I haven't lost my mind just yet. This is only my third video about FNAF, so there's still time. For those of you who forgot, it has been nine years since FNAF 1 after all. Foxy is one of the four OGs from a time before robot mind control and purple people, both figurative and literal. <sighs> Most of the first game involves checking the cameras to keep track of the animatronics and closing your doors when they get too close. Freddy, Chica, and Bonnie only move when you're not looking at them, so they seem to sort of teleport around. Foxy, on the other hand, just sort of hangs out in his own little area, just doing his own thing. Unless, of course, you don't look at him frequently enough, and then he might just sprint down the hall to come and kill you. Big mood. From a gameplay perspective, this is great. In a game where nothing really moves, having something suddenly book it at full speed towards you is super scary. But from a real world engineering perspective, well, the first Five Nights at Freddy's game is believed to take place in 1993. But by this point, all the animatronics are looking a little rough around the edges. So I'm gonna hazard a guess and say that this Foxy was built somewhere in the mid to late 80s at the latest. And a two-legged robot from that time period running is insane. To understand why, we first need to learn a little bit about real-world robotics and the very slow race for bipedal locomotion. Oh, you want to know how to survive an animatronic attack? Don't hide behind some doors that run on battery power for some reason, like a coward waiting to get cornered. No, you gotta fight back. Take that bear to Suplex City. Here, why don't you practice on that that subscribe button below this video? Just, just give it a smack, give it a, a click, a tap whatever you want, and then you hit it with one of these. <clears throat> Our story begins in the mid 80s at Honda. Yup, once upon a time, the same company that made your mom's old minivan was out there making robots. Now, the field of robotics wasn't exactly new at the time, but they weren't looking to make any old assembly line robot. They wanted to make a two-legged walking robot. Why? Well, they weren't sure what the applications of this technology would be at the time. Nobody had ever done such a thing, but they did have money to burn and a whole bunch of lab techs who were super into anime. That's, that is not a joke. That is literally the only reason. In 1986, they completed work on E0. E for experimental, zero for, well, zero. This little guy, aw, he's hideous. It may not have been glamorous, but they had successfully created the first robot capable of bipedal locomotion. Or basically, the first robot that could walk like a human. Mm, sort of. Being the first of its kind, E0 could only walk in a straight line and took nearly 5 seconds between each step. It was slow, clunky, and very unsteady. If this thing ever got possessed and was running amok in the pizza place you worked at, just open a window and wait for a breeze to come through. You'll be fine. 
Now, this whole project was kept a complete secret for 10 years, and to this day, there is no publicly available information on how exactly these robots worked, at least none that I could find. But we do know one of the main challenges that they faced, balance. If you take an object, anything that has mass, and find the exact point on the object where if you apply a force, you will push it, but not turn it at all, that's called the center of mass. It's kind of abstract and hard to think about, but for humans, it's, well, it's, it's right here, kind of in the middle of your stomach area. Why do I bring this up? Well, look down at your feet and imagine a rectangle drawn around them. If your center of mass lies over that rectangle, you'll stay balanced. If you lean away enough so that your center of mass drifts outside of that rectangle, you'll fall. Basically, in order to stay upright, an object's center of mass needs to be supported by something underneath it. Humans are usually able to detect gravity pretty well thanks to some fluid-filled organs in our ears called the semicircular canals, the cuticle, and the saccule. If our brain detects that our center of gravity is off balance, it will subconsciously make tiny adjustments in our muscles to keep you upright. Those of you who have ever gotten motion sickness before have these little organs to thank, because if they ever get confused for even half a second, they start freaking out. Oh, sound the alarm! Sound the alarm! We, we, we lost track of which way is up! It's anarchy in the streets out there, guys! Stomach, you there. Dump everything. No, no, I don't care, I don't care. Dump it all. It's the end of the world out there! Alright, so back to our good friend E0. Obviously, robots don't have ears, but they can be pretty good at detecting gravity using something like a gyroscope or accelerometer. Check out my video on Wii Remotes if you want to learn more about that. There is one problem though. The brain can receive, interpret, and send signals super quickly. Computers and electrical sensors, especially ones from the 80s though, not so much. On top of that, E0 only had six motors in its legs, meaning that it wasn't nearly as articulate as we are, so it's much harder for it to make micro adjustments to keep it balanced. So even if E0 realized, oh hey, I'm falling over, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Granted, balancing while standing still is pretty easy, even for a robot. But once you start walking, you're constantly changing the area you're supported by and your center of gravity is moving all over the place. You're basically just perpetually falling forward and catching yourself. We can learn to do this through muscle memory. We don't even have to think about it at this point. Robots don't have muscle memory, and until recently with the advancements in AI, they couldn't learn anything, so they just had to act on their initial programming. Basically, all of those factors combined made E0 look uh, a, little, a little tipsy sometimes, or maybe shwasted out of its mind, but the anime-loving techs at Honda weren't to be defeated so easily. Over the next seven years, they continued to refine and evolve their design, culminating in the E6 model completed in 1993, the same year FNAF 1 takes place, by the way. E6 was far superior to its younger siblings. It had much improved balance, maybe not reaching the realms of good, but it was better. It could turn, climb stairs, avoid minor obstacles, and reach a top speed of 4.7 miles per hour, which is like the equivalent of a brisk walk. So technically, yes, there were robots that could walk for the most part, like the animatronics in FNAF around the time the games were set, but they were cutting edge, the first of their kind and incredibly expensive. They weren't even used for anything, they were made for the sole purpose of research, basically just to prove that they could. Heck, the Osimo, the thing that the E and later P series robots would eventually lead to in 2000, you know, that little astronaut looking guy that you saw on the news that one time and you thought, Wow, the future is here. And you never heard anything about it again? Yeah, that was basically only ever used to show off Honda's tech. It was essentially an elaborate publicity stunt that was way too expensive and finicky to be used in any real commercial applications at the time. Let's compare that to Foxy. In case you forgot for a second that this was allegedly a video about Five Nights at Freddy's. 
According to this absolute legend from the FNAF wiki in 2017, Foxy runs at about 27.27 miles per hour, which is just a hair slower than Usain Bolt and far faster than OSHA's defecation when they walk into any Freddy's establishment in America. See, I told you I'd come back. But more importantly, it's leagues ahead of what our buddy E6 was clocking in at during the same year. To put that in perspective, the record for the fastest 100 meter dash by a bipedal robot was set in September of last year by Cassie, a robot built at Oregon State University with a time of 24.73 seconds or a speed of 9 miles per hour. And this was a robot designed for the sole purpose of running a 100 meter dash, not serving pizza. Now, I know what you're going to say, and sure, maybe Foxy can only run that fast because it has a ghost inside of it. I don't know, maybe, maybe this kid was on the track team or something. But the fact remains, all these robots were designed to be able to walk. Phone Guy says as much in the very first game. The fact that the motors in Foxy's legs are capable of creating the physical motion of running at those high speeds without shattering is proof that they expected Foxy to be able to move this fast. This is absolutely insane technology, but don't get the wrong idea. You might be thinking that this is proof that William and or Henry, the engineers who built these things in the games, were geniuses ahead of their time, but clearly they aren't, or else the government or some crazy tech company would have recruited them immediately. No, 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 don't worry, William's still an idiot. If technology like that is being used to serve pizza to kids in the 80s, then dumb serial killers stuck in rabbit costumes are the least of your worries. The military's definitely got T-1000s running around at this point. I know a lot of people point to the fun time animatronics from Sister Location as some of the most technologically advanced animatronics in the series. Many want to place this game later in the timeline because of that, but honestly, they're sleek and shiny and they got faceplates that pop open, but all of that is super achievable at the time. Yes, they too can walk around freely, which would be super impressive for the 80s, but take a look at the way Baby walks in FNAF VR. That slow waddle, the very wide feet, the small steps, that's all much more realistic for an early bipedal robot. They also have those magic sound floppy disks, but this is a series where ghosts exist and low possessing metal, there's only so much I can do here. Sure, there are animatronics with more teeth, sharper claws, and little crab hands, but if you're not a dummy and don't stay in a tiny room where they can easily corner you, all you gotta do is briskly power walk towards the exit, lock it behind you, and you win. It's not like these places really need security guards anyway, it's a building full of nothing but trash and robots that will attempt to murder anything on site. Or Heck, if these are anything like the E-series robots of the time in real life, the guy who's always beating up the subscribe button might be right. Just give them a swift boot to the chest and they're down for the count. Until these animatronics get ranged weapons, all you gotta do is stay out of arm's reach of them and you're completely safe. Which, honestly, looking at William's track record, it might just be a matter of time before he's like, you know, I felt that the addition of a 90 pound compound bow would really add to Freddy's charm and help him connect with the children a bit more. And then five kids would turn up dead with arrows sticking out of them and the police would be like, hmm, wonder what could have happened here. Real, real brain teaser this one. But until that day comes, why is Foxy the most dangerous animatronic? Well, put simply, it's the only one you can't outrun. Unless you're Usain Bolt, and then you really got nothing to worry about.